Hey everyone, and thank you for joining Customer Drive podcast. Uh, today we're going to discuss our sprint review, and we're going to give you guys a little bit of overview of what we did in the last sprint. My name is Ivalu Vasilev, and today we're also joined by Nelson, the head of our physics department. So Nelson, please go ahead and let's do a small summary of what did we achieve in the last sprint. I know that we were able to do a lot of work and do significant progress with the warm drive research. So please, Nelson, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Vailo. Uh, yes, yes, uh, we did uh, some very nice uh, uh, understandings of, our, of the things that we need to, to, to find out how to work in order to, to get more deep in the, into the warp drive research. Uh, basically, what we did during this sprint was to uh, study junction conditions, which we think is going to be very important uh, for some of the ideas that we have to implement uh, this uh, bubble war drives and some space times that come that that might come into into the the, the game, and this is uh, very nice because these junction conditions are something that's very well known for some time. But yes, it's something that's necessary for us. This is not final, of course, and we did this like a, the most important thing. Also, I, I will comment some other things that we did, and uh, the junction conditions that we did. Basically, we understand that uh, you have to, what we call the the thin shell uh, model, and thin shell model is basically you have uh, some spherical in this case uh, a shell of a very thin, of course, of matter, uh, maybe not matter at all, maybe it can be empty empty space, and you have an interior space time and an exterior space time, and these two space times that are different, of course. They have to match somehow in this surface. In this surface, matching is uh, what we call the junction conditions. And of course, you can have uh, inside this thin shell some other matter that it will tell you uh, how the space time is uh, dynamically, dynamically uh, evolving inside and something outside. So in that sense, it's like you have uh, the way we're thinking is that you have a bubble, you have something inside, which is could be a vehicle, for example, and outside you have some space time. This is, of course, uh, something that is not directly related to the warp drives yet, but this is uh, where we're heading. And the point is that you to match these two things, either if there is matter in the tin shell or not, you have uh, to uh, calculate uh, what is called the junction conditions. These junction conditions are related to what we call the first and the second fundamental form. This is a way of saying that you have to match basically the uh, components of the metric tensors from inside and outside, and then the components of what we call the extrinsic curvature on the surface. What is this extrinsic curvature? This extrinsic curvature is uh, uh, a curvature that is related only to the surface. This is something that is related to the surface, but this the curvature that the surface will see as embed, embed into a larger space time. So it's a way of saying you have like a, a sphere and this sphere, you know, is a sphere because it's in a larger space time, which is the space time usually the one where we uh, were standing and looking at the sphere. But if you live on the sphere, you don't see exactly that you are on the sphere. You don't see the curvature. You can say you are local there, but there is a way to know. What is the way to know? Well, you define some vectors that are uh, uh, normal to this surface, and this vector lives in this uh, larger uh, space time. And using these vectors and the coordinates on the sphere, in this case, you can calculate something that you call extrinsic curvature. And this extrinsic curvature is telling you this is the curvature of the sphere. And of course, it depends which is the larger space time. So if you have a larger space time, exterior space time, then you have extrinsic curvature as seen from outside, and then you have a, a, an internal space time. And this interior space time is going to give you an extrinsic curvature as seen from the inside. So these two extrinsic curvatures have to match exactly in the surface. And this is basically what we learned how to do with several examples. Uh, of course, with one thing that we did is we always try to calculate this, uh, understand the definitions, and 
implemented this in Mathematica, which we did. In fact, we, we proved it using a very nice thesis. Uh, if we reproduce some of the results, we find we found some mistakes, in fact, in this thesis, which is okay, no very serious mistakes, but some problems in the calculations. And uh, we proved that this works very nice, and we were able to uh, implement this in Mathematica. Also, for instance, we found two different ways, we implemented two different ways of calculating the extrinsic curvatures uh, in two mathematical different notebooks. <laughs> And it's, uh, it's very nice because we can compare to both are, of course, mathematically equivalent. But uh, when you want to implement something, uh, the calculations are quite different. Anyway, this is what's one of the things that we study. Of course, then you have some other things that appear. So for instance, for example, if you have some matter on this uh, surface, and then you have some equations that tells you how is going to be the dynamics of the space time and the matter on the surface? It is like a projection on the surface of all these features that you have in Einstein's equations. And this is what we call Kodas equations. This is the next step, actually, that we're taking. It's also Kodas and also Langsos equations. And the Langsos equations we already understand. Uh, we, this is something that we did in this case. So uh, we now have this very um, well understanding model of how to put this space times, any space time together. Why are we doing this? Because we think that in the in the case of a scenario of a war drive, you have this bubble that is formed uh, in, in the way that Antarius uh, described in his paper, which is the way we're following at this uh, and, uh, so for this part of the project. And uh, we think that we might propose some approaches where the space times could change or you can have different matter and the, and the junction conditions are going to be very help, helpful here. On the other hand, we also uh, review uh, the Cuvier's and Natario uh, papers. We review both. We saw that uh, uh, Natario's is uh, more general and you can have a spe special case of Natario's is uh, Cuvier's paper. So we decided to go on with Natarius as, a, as a, the first step. And uh, there are several propositions and definitions and theorems that Natarius has on this paper. Um, very nice paper, uh, 2001, I think. And well, we went on this. Basically, what Natarius did was just to propose, or this is the, the way that what drives should be constructed according to him. And this is basically saying that you have some space time metric that is uh, what we call an hyperbolic. Uh, space time and from there you have some function that mix it up a bit like the, the the time and the space components and this space time is constructed in a way that you have like layers of space each layer of space is one you can imagine this way you have layers of space one behind the other and this construction each this layer is a time ahead of the other so each layer is like the time the future time of the previous layer so you have the dynamics of the layer is like uh, having a, a a series of photographs of the layers of space of course these are three-dimensional layers and then uh, this layers of space they have like a series of photographs each series corresponding to a different time so this in this way we call that we broke the covariance of the theory this is what is known as the adm uh, uh formulation um it's very used uh, a lot useful when you want to do general relativity, numerical general relativity, which is not exactly our case. But this is the way that you construct this space time. And the point is here that it, it is, uh, you find that you can construct this space time and you have some functions involved there that is this function is going to tell you how if there is going to be a warp or not, how this space, space time is going to be flat or not. And this is basically the things that Natarius explored in this, his paper, uh, at, at, at least at the first part of the paper, and we reproduce those. So we reproduce, uh, we prove some definitions, we understand the propositions that Natarius did, and this involves also extrinsic curvatures, which is something then that we already know because of the previous things that I told you. And with this in mind, well, basically, uh, we understood how is this that it's going to work. 
now the next steps are uh, going a bit uh, uh, further, which is uh, basically working with this function that Natarius uses, uh, which in a special in a special case, I mean this is specific case is just uh, Alcubierre, but you have an, uh, a lot of more freedom, but not so much freedom <laughs> as we might want. Uh, and basically th that's it. Uh, now that we understand junction conditions, we are at the point now of applying to 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 some of the Natarios space times uh, warp drive uh, uh, scenarios. Uh, one thing that we're doing already now is just we're starting to change the energy momentum tensor that appears there that we know violates the strong energy conditions and look how to play with this and started to look in forms as uh, how this is violated we know but how this is that other other features in the energy momentum tensor appear how did, did, did this thing change this violation uh, we know that there are several things that haven't uh, yet taken into account because usually people use dust as the matter and uh, we want to use more complicated stuff and this is the step that we're taking now thank you nelson and uh can you please talk a little bit our approach uh for the artifacts we created so because uh, to the best of my understanding currently every equations we do we put it in mathematical notebook so we have all the the uh, equations being derived in mathematical notebook so if we change something in the beginning this is going to reflect all of the equations and this is exactly what we want to achieve to play with these equations and see can we achieve more. Uh, do you mind just to talk a little bit about this approach of using Mathematica Notebook? Yes, of course. Uh, well, Mathematica is extremely useful. These calculations are usually very, very long. Uh, it it takes pages of calculating. It takes a lot of time to calculate even the, the most simple uh, tensors. Uh, and as you started to complicate more than the metrics <laughs> it gets very 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 messy so mathematical is really really helpful and yes we uh, we then implemented uh, some notebooks which is basically uh taking einstein's equations from the very beginning you define their um riemann tensor of course the einstein tensor for that you need riemann tensor uh you the rich tensor you the rich scalar and for this you need to to have in mind the, the 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 implementation of the the Christopher symbols, for example, and this is something that is includes the metric there. So then you implement this step by step. So basically, you change the metric and some head of the of the notebook, and you get all the equations. This is something that is uh, more or less simple. It has to be being you have to do it very carefully, and then after that. Then we, of course, we have, we start to enrich these notebooks with, uh, for example, calculations of the 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 pile tensor, which is going to be helpful later. You want to have some definitions of some scalars, which are the ones that are which result is independent of the <clears throat> sorry of the uh, the change of coordinates that you use, and uh, also uh, we start to implement something like a well several ways of calculating uh covariant derivative and from there of course we get also extrinsic curvature uh and the, 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 these calculations on the surface which is for example we are codasi equations and those are, so we are adding each step something new and uh, basically at the end we are ending up with uh, uh notebooks that are a bit long but uh, they have blocks that each block is depending on each other. So you have something that you calculate in the first block and you have the results. And then you, depending of the situation of this very general model, you pour more specific uh, uh, features and then the, you go to the next block and you take another calculations, the different calculations that are depending, of course, of the previous block uh, and so on. This is the way that is being developed. So each time we have a larger and larger notebook. Thank you, Nelson. Actually, uh, during uh, your explanation, I opened the mathematical notebook, so it is 
very very significant work because I saw that it's about 2800 rows right now and we're keep adding that uh, in, into this mathematical notebook and I know that um, Gabriel did some of the calculations by hand because we want to make sure that we have very good understanding and all of the foundation what we are currently building for the warp drive is correct and we'll check it at least in two different ways. Yes, yes, he he likes to do that. It's just the way we are uh, we're formed as a physicist. We like to check things twice or three times. <laughs> and uh, yes, and he he likes to do this by hand. He do, does not make all the, the, the all the calculations by hand, but he checks a, a lot of, for example, a lot of uh, the components of the tensor matrix. Uh, oh, sorry, so the Ricci tensor, for example, or something like that. He checks by hand first. And he wants to know, okay, I, I obtained this by hand and obtained this in Mathematica. It looks, it's the same, so we are fine. Or right. it's different and then you recheck your cal by hand calculations and see if you have some mistakes, which is usually what happens. <laughs> uh, or just check if you did something wrong in the Mathematica notebook. Yes. Right. And uh, here I opened the notarius paper. If somebody wants to check it uh, out, it is currently on the screen. Yeah, it's quite nice. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you, you can see there. This is a lot of nice information there. It's a bit old. There are new, exciting uh, publications the relating war drives, which is uh, last year publications, but we we will get into those later. Yes. Yes. All right, Nelson. Well, um, I think we can wrap up for today. Thank you very much for making this overview. And to everyone, thank you very much for listening to our podcast. If you want to support us, please like and share the video. Uh, We're going to share the Patreon links below. And let me wish to all of you to have a very nice and successful day.